Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant-Based Bride, back again with another video. And today I'm excited to share with you my setup in my husband's bullet journal for September with a mushroom theme. I have done a theme with mushrooms involved before. A few years back, I believe that was actually in September as well in my bullet journal, maybe 2018. And ever since then, I've been wanting to do another mushroom theme. I just find mushrooms fascinating and love how many different varieties there are. So after my husband and I watched an interview with Paul Stamets, who is a leading scientist in the field of fungi, or fungi as he pronounces it, we both felt a mushroom theme was way overdue for his bullet journal. So that is what I'm doing this month. This one took me quite a long time to do, painting all the different types of mushrooms. There are so many tiny little details to add if you want the mushrooms to look even remotely realistic. So if you decide to do a theme like this, just keep that in mind. It might take you a while. I definitely recommend giving yourself the time to work in layers and really build things up slowly over time instead of trying to add too much too soon. The Skillshare class I recommended in my last video, which was my September plan with me in my bullet journal, really helped me in creating this setup. So if you're looking for more tips for how to paint mushrooms, mushrooms with watercolor, definitely check out my last video and the class I recommended there. So I'm starting with the cover page and quote page. I haven't done a quote page in my husband's bullet journal in a while, but we were chatting about how his bullet journal was working for him, uh, whether he needed anything else or needed anything to change. And he was saying that he felt like he was starting to run out of space on his monthly calendar now that he has a lot more going on with work. So we decided to go back to a two page calendar, which we haven't done in a while, just to give him more space to play with. And because of expanding the calendar to two pages, I wasn't able to continue to do the layout I've been doing for the last little while of having the cover page and the calendar opposite each other. So I decided to include a quote page again, and I had to use a quote by Paul Stamets since he is what started this whole theme. So the quote I chose was, fungi are the interface organisms between life and and death. I feel like this is such a good tip of the iceberg into all of the mind-blowing stuff that Paul Stamets talks about. I would highly recommend checking out some of his interviews to learn more. Just a very interesting guy and he has a lot of really fascinating things to say about fungus and mushrooms. So I'm using my stamp set to do the lettering here and then for the artwork on the quote page, I was initially just going to do a simple border and then as I was thinking about it, I thought it might be cute to have some mushrooms, some just tiny little mushrooms growing out from the top of the frame. And as I was thinking about how I was going to make them look like they were growing out of it, I realized that it would actually be really cool to create the frame itself out of mycelium, which is the root system of mushrooms. And the mycelium is actually the largest portion of the organism. The mushrooms that you see above ground are actually just the fruit of the organism. And those mushrooms that you see are less than 5% of the organism. The mycelium is the neural network of the mushroom that connects it to mushrooms that are incredibly far away that seem like completely different organisms, but they're actually all part of the same organism. More than 80% of the earth under your feet is made up of mycelium. Just take that in for a moment. It's wild. Literally. <laughs> so I'm starting by painting my little baby tiny mushrooms. I actually decided later to add a fourth mushroom on the right side just so that things would look a little more asymmetrical and therefore a little more natural. And then I'm creating the mycelial network to connect all these mushrooms together and also to create this frame. So starting with little clumps of soil under the mushrooms themselves and connecting those along the top to indicate that the top portion here is like the surface of the soil. And then from the bottom, I'm connecting all these very fine root systems, mycelial network systems, all these tiny little branches that really resemble veins and are 
arteries within the human body, just everything branching off and connecting to each other. And I'm also connecting those around, creating a rectangle around the quote and adding some extra little pathways coming off in the corners just to really tie everything together. I feel like the more random this is, the better, which is why I didn't even sketch out this network ahead of time. I realized that if I tried too consciously to plan it, that it would turn out not looking realistic. Just because nature is so random to our eyes, mycelial networks aren't set up in clear grid systems. They are adaptive and they move their way around obstructions and just branch off in any direction they can as they adapt to their environment. Moving on to the cover page where I'm painting four large mushrooms. And these are Amanita muscaria mushrooms, which are actually poisonous. So if you ever see these Super Mario Bros mushrooms out in the wild, don't eat them, they're toxic. <laughs> While I'm working on these mushrooms on the cover page, I thought I'd add some more interesting facts about mushrooms. There truly are so many more than I could possibly include in a single video. But one that really stands out to me that I've heard Paul Stamets talk about in interviews is that mushrooms are genetically closer to humans than they are to plants which is a little mind blowing. And this fact, along with how adaptive and responsive and resourceful mycelial networks are, has led Paul Stamets to believe that mushrooms are actually sentient, which is very interesting and a little off-putting, I must say. <laughs> Another super cool fact about mushrooms is that the largest organism on the planet is a honey fungus, which is 2.4 miles across. For my metric friends, that's almost four kilometers. The part of the cover page that took the longest to do was the base part of the mushrooms rather than the caps. And it's interesting because the caps of at least this variety of mushroom and a lot of other types of mushrooms, I suppose, are sort of the most eye-catching, interesting portions of the mushroom. But I actually feel like in painting mushrooms, the stem portion of the mushroom and the underneath of the cap really hold the most detail. And that's where I try to focus the most of my time in trying to create something realistic. And again, my biggest tip here is to work in layers, to start with really light, transparent layers, let those dry, and slowly add up layer after layer those darker details and those finer details. You can start with more of a wet on wet technique and as you add layers, you're going to want to work relatively dry on dry so that you don't disturb those underneath layers. I'm also adding little clumps of dirt and portions of the root system or the mycelial network coming off the bottom of the mushrooms so that it looks like this group of mushrooms was just pulled out of the ground. Once I finished the cover page, I flipped to my next spread, which is going to be the calendar page. And as you can see, I've decided to create this little step back effect on the spreads here. This is something I haven't done before in any setup, but was inspired by my love of using tabs in my own bullet journal. And I've never done anything similar for my husband, but I thought it might be cool to create this little step back feeling with three different colored stripes so that it'd be easy for him to flip from one spread to the other and identify what's where without needing to use a bookmark necessarily. I am creating my calendar here, just a very simple calendar, trying to give him as much space as I can to add in appointments and deadlines, shows, whatever he needs. Now I'm starting to work on the mushrooms on the calendar page, which are oyster mushrooms. 
I've always found the appearance of oyster mushrooms so fascinating. They just have such a distinct shape to them. And though they are relatively simple as far as colors and patterns, they just have some sort of, I don't know, ethereal quality to them. I find anytime I see a collection of different types of mushrooms gathered together, my eyes often drawn to the oyster mushroom first. Another super interesting fact about mushrooms is that the hardest natural material in nature is sporopollenin, which mushroom spores are made of. Sporopollenin is so strong that mushroom spores can actually survive the vacuum and radiation of space. So now I'm just waiting for Elon Musk to make all of his spaceships out of mushroom spores. I'm sure it'll happen. on to the final spread here, which is the first page of my husband's notes pages. As I've explained before, he uses these notes pages as essentially his daily log where he can just jot down to-do lists, tasks, things he needs to remember, phone numbers, settings on the board, requests from bands, whatever he needs during the day. This is where it goes. And I just set up the first page for him, make it look pretty. And then he uses as many pages as he needs throughout the month. On this last page, I'm just adding a little cluster of mushrooms. And these ones I took a little bit of creative license with. They're not exactly one species of mushroom or another. I kind of combined three different different types together that I thought would look cool. <laughs> so I apologize for my deviation from realism here, but I just wanted to make mushrooms I thought looked cool. Okay, I'm sure there are mushrooms that look like this. There are so many different species. More than 14,000, actually. A final fact to share about mushrooms here, since I love talking about mental health, psilocybin mushrooms, also known as magic mushrooms, are being researched by John Hopkins University to treat depression, addiction, anxiety, and many more psychological problems. It's possible that we'll find that psilocybin mushrooms can help to heal a lot of mental illnesses that so far have been difficult or impossible to treat. The studies are very interesting and promising. And now we have come to the end of this video. I'll do a final little flip through to show you all of the spreads. Be sure to leave a mushroom emoji in the comments if you enjoyed the facts. And let me know what your favorite mushroom is, if you have a favorite, whether it's the kind you like to eat the most, or the one you think is prettiest, or the one you think is most interesting. I want to know. I really like how this setup turned out. It was really fun to put together and my husband was really excited about it, which is always the best part. Don't forget to check out my setup in my own bullet journal, which went up last week. I did a celestial moth theme there. Like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. I want to take a moment to thank my patrons for their support. Extra special thanks to our newest patrons. Justin, Heather, Kay, Sarah, Nikki, another Kay, Rennie, Pamela, Heather, Misty, Tracy, and Lindsay. Welcome all of you to the squad. We are so excited to have you. If you at home want to join the squad, feel free. There's a link in the card and in the description box down below. And with that, I'm going to get going. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you really soon in my next one. Bye, friends. <laughs>